Under the administration of the late Dr. Hage G. Kengop, Namibia was awarded the Freedom of the Press Award and ranks number one on the African continent. As we continue to look into different topics under his administration, the topic for today is the president and the media. My name is Dean Vikisting, alongside sign language interpreter for this portion of the broadcast, Maggie Kashina Monene. Now we've invited different journalists just to find out from them how it was to be a journalist under the administration of the late Dr. Hage G. Kengop. First up though, Dr. Alfredo Hingari, who's the press secretary for the presidency. Good afternoon, doctor, and welcome to this special tribute broadcast. Good afternoon, uh, uh, Denver. Um, it's uh, indeed uh, a pleasure for me to be here uh, to share with uh, Namibians some perspectives about uh, the very consequential role uh, President Hage Jigengo played in uh, shaping the media landscape in the country and also the manner in which uh, information is uh, shared with the Namibian public. Thank you, Doctor. Before we get into the particulars of Dr. Kengup's relationship with the media, perhaps let's talk about the importance of a presidency mm -hmm. engaging the media mm -hmm. to foster the de democratic fundamentals of a country. Mm -hmm. Why would you say that is fundamentally important? Well, I think it's uh, fundamentally important because uh, in Namibia, um, we have a political system that is uh, presidential uh, slash semi-presidential, uh, where the head of state is uh, directly elected uh, through uh, universal suffrage, uh, meaning that Namibians uh, elect a head of state uh, therefore, they have the right to information, to know the policies, the actions the head of state is undertaking in furtherance of the objectives of progress and development. Mm. Uh, therefore, um, as the apex office in the land, uh, the question of uh, information, the question of um, proactive dissemination thereof becomes very central in the functioning and sustenance of our democracy. Mm. At the helm of the Apex office mm. was Dr. Hageji Kenko for close to nine years. Let's unpack his approach to media relations during his tenure. Uh, Denver, I had the privilege of uh, saving the president uh, when he was a founding prime minister and his approach to the media has been very consistent. Um, one that is uh, transparent, then one that is engaging because he saw his work as prime minister, not just as a question of his work, but in service of the Namibian people. Therefore, Namibians had the right to know what the prime minister is doing as um, uh, a very important personality in the country. And as president, uh, that approach was accelerated because uh, he understood the unique place a president occupies in the governance architecture of our mm. country. Um, you will recall the president uh, engaging, never missing an opportunity to engage with journalists um, through press briefings, um, and uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic, he understood clearly the essence of information and the need to communicate clearly to the Namibian, to the Namibian public. Um, one thing about President Gengob that stood out as well in terms of his approach to the media was that every query that comes to the office must be addressed uh, in a manner that is detailed, uh, in a manner that communicates the activities of the president and the government at large. Uh, he never liked the idea of anyone in the government system not communicating properly when he reads in the newspaper that uh, who and who was not available, available for comment. These are things that really um, uh, they didn't sit well with him mm. because he felt that as a government, 
uh, as uh, senior government officials, we had an obligation to share information, to respond to queries from the media, uh, because he believed strongly in that mantra of uh, uh, accountability plus transparency equals trust, because mm -hmm. transparent governance is a condition sine qua non for the trust of the Namibian people. So he had availed himself fully to the Namibian people, and he saw the media as an important transmission belt in that process. And I also have to add uh, quickly, Denver, uh, he was an avid reader of newspapers, uh, followed the radio, uh, he, he followed almost every other program on television in a manner that was surprising. Mm. Uh, he had the ability to, to converse about a cultural program on, on TV, a sports program on TV, and those of us who worked with him were always challenged because we, we just couldn't keep pace with the manner in which he consumed information about Namibia and also the world because he understood clearly that as a head of state, he had to know what is happening in the country and that's the best way in which a leader keeps in touch with the people. Of course, in addition to the personal contact with Namibians that he so preciously appreciated. You mentioned COVID-19 and run-of-the-mill communication, of course, differs from crisis communication. Mm. And we were in a crisis as a country. The continent was in crisis. The globe was in crisis. What is it that stands out for you about that time mm. and the pace at which often very heavy information had to be mm. communicated and disseminated to ensure what is in the public domain is factually correct information and not a perpetuation of misinformation mm. and disinformation. What uh, stands out to me uh, during that period was the, the gravity with which uh, uh, President Gengop dealt with uh, the COVID-19 pandemic and the essence of communication during that period. Um, it is during that deadly pandemic that uh, he also said we need to update Namibians on a daily basis. Um, at times, even when we didn't have much information to share on a day, he felt the need to say we need to reassure, even if we don't have maybe specific information, but we need to reassure them. And uh, the government communication uh, information center was set up during that period to say, no, we need to proactively engage Namibians in terms of information because uh, we are dealing with a crisis, a health crisis, a pandemic uh, that was unprecedented with uh, uh, devastating impacts on the lives of Namibians. He understood the gravity of the situation. And, and mind you, Doctor, that comes against the backdrop of him having tested positive himself during that time. Exactly. And as, as the first citizen, he felt that it was his obligation to raise consciousness about the reality of COVID-19 because you may recall, Denver, that there were uh, Namibians who didn't believe that uh, COVID-19 was real, they thought it's a conspiracy. And uh, as a first citizen, he felt that he has an obligation to raise awareness about the dangers of COVID-19. And he would always say that this is, this is uh, a virus, it's a disease that does not discriminate against anybody. A president can get it, any other person can get it. So that raised the level of consciousness within the country. And it was his own way of remaining very loyal to his convictions about transparency um, as, a sin, as a condition sine qua non for effective governance. Mm. Doctor, 
being on the other side of the fence, I wouldn't imagine that managing relations with the media is necessarily what one would refer to as a walk in Zoo Park, right? Mm. Please talk to us about the most memorable moments, experiences that you and Dr. Kengup had in pursuit of managing relations with the media in this country. No, there has been a, a, a difficult moments um, when it comes to the relationship mm. with the media. But uh, you will recall that President Gengob um, reminded the media constantly that for as long as I'm president of the Republic of Namibia, no journalist will be arrested, no journalist will be threatened um, for writing this or that story about the president or any matter pertaining to government. That was the conviction because you, you recall that President Gengob was a, a prime minister when uh, the Windhoek Declaration came into, into being. I think uh, it's over, over 30 years ago. Um, and uh, he was a champion for that free press as one of the drafters of the Constitution. And he strongly believed that uh, the fight for freedom was about freedom of expression. Uh, and that includes the press. And that's why the, our Constitution is very clear uh, to that effect. And um, um, one of the difficult moments, of course, but uh, President Genkop always had this ability to deal with difficult mat matters mm. in a manner that was gracious, in a manner that was reassuring to others around him. And at times he would say, no, but why are you panicking? Uh, and uh, so you would deal with an issue in terms of the merits of the case and also with the clear objective of communicating to, to Namibians. And of course, uh, the, uh, we will not forget 2019 when uh, the whole fish rod saga exploded and uh, the calm uh, with which President Gengob dealt with that matter. And he said, no, look, uh, we have to uh, be factual about uh, uh, our position. Mm. And uh, there were those who wanted to graft him into uh, the story, but uh, he was, you know, confident as a leader that uh, he's above board, as he's, as he's, as he's always been. And uh, that's, that's how we dealt with the matter of uh, uh, fish rod. Of course, the, there were other incidences that proved more or less complicated, but I think that one stands out. Of course, I will not uh, go into more details around the, the shootings of uh, Namibians uh, on the uh, border with Botswana, which was quite difficult because we mm -hmm. needed to uh, provide information to Namibians as to what had transpired. Uh, and the president also had to manage uh, uh, our bilateral relations with Botswana, whereas at the time Namibians were uh, quite angry, reasonably so, but uh, uh, the president dealt with that matter in a manner that reassured Namibians, but also strengthened our bilateral relations with Botswana. Were they justified or otherwise? Was it your observation that at times the media dealt with him in a manner that was not fair towards him as a person, but certainly of him as a head of state? I think the, the person that he is, uh, President Gengob never felt that he was a victim. Uh, he always said, no, look, I, I walked a journey and uh, I emerged victorious as president of the Republic of Namibia. He understood the honor and uh, the privilege, and he understood the mission that was his. Uh, therefore, he, he never felt that the media is treating him in a manner that was unfair. He understood that uh, uh, he was a modern president, uh, one who communicated in a manner that was transparent. And of course, transparency would invite um, 
its own demands. Uh, mm. At times, uh, for some of us who worked with him, would see them as unfair, but he always felt, no, we, we need to respond to the query. Uh, and uh, this, is, this has nothing to do with uh, uh, an issue being unfair or a personal attack, but you know, he had that ability to say, no, look, I can't be in this office and be a victim. Uh, we need to focus on the essential tasks uh, which have always been uh, the development and the progress of the Namibian people. So that big picture, that big picture animated even his relations with the media that is not about this moment or what they are trying to say about me. But uh, the, the essence here is how do we strengthen our governance architecture? How do we strengthen freedom of the press in the country, through my actions as president, my ability to respond to their query. So he would be extremely annoyed if a query is left unattended because mm. he drew a lot of pride from his ability to communicate with the media in a manner that was transparent, um, of course, friendly, but there were times where he would be annoyed, but that's in the nature of the office. And, uh, but generally, uh, a leader who, who loved the media, mm. there's no question about that, uh, loved interacting with journalists, loved cracking a joke with a journalist. Um, so I think um, the template that President Gengop has uh, left behind in terms of our republic um, managing uh, the conversation, the national conversation. Let's flesh is out one that, that is a bit more, Doctor. Mm. He has been revered over the past two weeks for being a tactical politician mm. and a phenomenal strategist. And close to his heart, the well-being of the Namibian people, close to his heart, the development of this country. Mm -hmm. So if we're talking about the, temp the templates, and we've touched on it already, mm -hmm. which do you believe were his key strategies, his key tactics, if you will, in pursuit of communicating his ambitions, his plans, his dreams, his ideals for this republic and for her people? Uh, President Gengop, um always believed that the essence, as I had also indicated earlier, the essence of his governing style uh, is the question of transparency, uh, the question of, tr of accountability, and how do you account to Namibians? Of course you can account through uh, instruments such as the State of the Nation Address, through statements that the President delivers at this or that occasion, but he had a, a highly focused uh, relationship with the media. And um, that was in his arsenal of governance, very essential, a highly focused relationship with the media as an important stakeholder. And that's why I raised the question of him, you know, reading newspapers very early in the morning, uh, watching Good Morning Namibia, uh, watching the news, uh, watching all sorts of programs uh, because his passion for the Namibian people was such that every aspect of Namibian society must be understood for us to govern the country effectively. Um, so I think as a, as, as a leader, he, he was... Uh, what you would call a maximum leader in that sense. Um, I don't want to get into this or that tactic or strategy because I don't think that that is the approach he had um, towards the well-being of the country. Uh, he was passionate about uh, uh, the Namibian people and their development. So every action that he undertook was in the advancement of the Namibian people and communication, communicating clearly to Namibians uh, through uh, the national development plans 
the Harambe Prosperity Plan 1 and 2, Vision 2030. These are the templates for him uh, that were crucial in terms of us understanding each other as Namibians, that we have uh, a shared future, that we have shared interest, and we need to hold hands um, and walk in the same direction. What responsibility vests in all of us, but particularly in the presidency, to honor his legacy in this regard, to see to it that the work that we as Namibia have to wrap up whatever it is that he laid the foundation for and set the bar very high for, but to not negate on those fundamentals and to not dishonor that legacy. The legacy of unity, um, President Gengob was minted in, uh, in the Oshodunjupa region, the town of Tsumeb, Otavi, Oshuarongo. These are and Hrut Fontaine, um, I've been privileged to accompany him on a number of occasions to some of those towns where Namibians in those spaces, they speak different languages. And um, that shaped his outlook on life. And um, the question of unity uh, was very central to him. The question of fighting against the ills of tribalism, racism, regionalism, all sorts of divisions. Um, these are things that uh, he abhorred uh, as an antithesis to what a Namibian ought to be. Mm -hmm. So we have to embrace one another. That's an important legacy from a leader like President Gengob who never looked at um, people in his office in terms of their ethnicity, in terms of where they come from, cultural, economic status, a leader who related to any Namibian, every Namibian as an equal. Uh, that's an important heritage for all of us to carry forward. Thank you, Doctor. The other important aspect that I think is worth mentioning is uh, the, it's hard work. Uh, President Genga was a hard worker, uh, resilient, um, and, and I, I mentioned it elsewhere that he never liked excuses or explanations when the work is not done. And I think he understood that for us to develop Namibia, we need to work hard. And we can honor his memory, all of us as Namibians, through a culture of dedication to the job that we have, what that we have to execute. Because he also understood that his work meant the prosperity Mm. All Namibians. And I think all of us in our respective stations, we can honor the legacy of President Gengob by following that beautiful example. What will you miss most about him? Um, I will miss the, the, the person more. Um, uh, you have the president, but um, I really loved the, the person more. Um, someone who was um, jovial, he had this uh, debonair approach uh, to himself. Uh, he had a, a joy of life for life, uh, an ability to discuss soccer, and then you know he would be able to talk about basketball, American football, tennis, and many of us, you know, we we only know soccer, but he could, you know. Um, uh, discuss on a range of topics, and that range, and the warmth with which uh, he hosted people around him at Casa Rosalia, and uh, when you are abroad in his hotel room, his love for people, his love for humanity, and his concern with the well-being of each and everyone in the room, mm -hmm. uh, that is a, a massive legacy. And many of us would find it very difficult to emulate. But the example has been said by someone who is at that level of a head of state, but still has time for each and every one in the room. He, he, when you are having lunch with him, he would ask his security guys, no, have they eaten? 
are they catered for? If they are not, uh, here's the money. Please make sure that everybody has eaten. Mm -hmm. So the humanity, the, the human being, uh, that, that's, that's the person that uh, many of us uh, are going to miss. That warmth, you know, that ability to, to scold a Jew, but also to understand that if I scold a Jew at five, by six o'clock, that, that, that one is over, so we can have a different conversation about soccer. We'll invite you to come to his house for a drink and to chat about this or that issue. So I think a very dynamic leader, um, a very um, versatile human being. Um, so very, so I think we are going to, we are going to miss that person. Mm. Um, uh, for some of us, we had the privilege of uh, working with um, a great human being. Uh, you'll miss the person even more than, uh, of course, the president who was for all Namibians. Doctor, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for sharing all of that. Thank you for your service. It's the thank you. Nation. Thank you. Thank you. It's indeed a pleasure. This afternoon, we're exploring the intersection between the media and the presidency, and that was Dr. Alfred Engari, the presidential spokesperson, helping us understand who the person was behind the man, Dr. Hageji Kengo.